What it do? Boing, what it do? <laughs> hey guys, today, as you can see, we are doing a different activity. Yeah. One in which we really enjoy. I True. mean, you enjoy the most. I feel like... I've actually never done this before. But I feel like we've actually... We hit it off like this as well. Like we had moments of yeah. just like making art together. Listening yeah. To music, You're so. teaching me how to collage, listening to music and me watching you draw the walls basically this <laughs> is this guy and um there's so many other walls that are drawn but you can't see them in this frame yeah, yeah. so karibuni everybody this is Love jangara me. and <laughs> well yeah both of us are right <laughs> <laughs> this is the long play podcast hosted by jangara and Olango. <laughs> And we basically talk about creative business, creative pursuits. We really just want to offer a space for creatives to talk, learn, engage, connect, network, yep. enjoy, love enjoy. life. Yep. Yeah, basically. So if you are creative, then this is the home for you because we discuss everything creative. And today's topic, as today's topic is going to be uh, discussed as we paint our pants. Um, as you guys can see, I don't know if you guys can see this, but uh, you, you can, but it's, um, it's already drawn uh, using chalk and what you're going to do is paint over it with, with a, mm -hmm. some acrylic. Yeah, we've got white, we've got black, which are, uh, you know, the ones that we mainly want to use, but also we've got a bit of, what Blue else? Blue and yellow. Change. Blue Change. and yellow. So let's see what comes out of this, guys. Um, we are going to be wearing this for an event tonight, so let's see. Yep. Oh, you give me the black one, eh? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So as we do this, we are going to be talking about something quite interesting. I believe it's, it's interesting and it is art for art's sake. Mm. It sounds kind of like, nah, I don't know how it sounds to you, but um, I feel like as artists, once your creativity, your artistic pursuit has turned into your career, then there's a lot of attachment to it, what it should be, how it should feel like, who you're doing it for, what are their expectations, that you forget to just enjoy the art that you forget that art has value basically just because you created it. Yeah. And we're going to also be talking about sorry that's my phone. We're also going to be talking about how to get back into the space where you create art for art's sake. For art's sake. Hence where we're creating art. <laughs> for art's sake. Yeah. Something that we're honestly proud of, something we're conf like it, it makes us feel confident going out for an event and knowing that you know, you're gonna like get, oh, where did you get this? And you know, <laughs> yeah. you're actually the person who made it just for the sake of, you know, like just for the sake of doing it. I think for me, actually, that started in COVID times because, um, so my laptop went off. We should be, yeah, we should be doing this. My laptop, my laptop went off, mm -hmm. and um, I also didn't have like. Uh, TV or anything like that. I only had my phone mm -hmm. and the walls <laughs> and a lot of magazines. I don't know why I had a lot of magazines. You did have a lot of magazines. <laughs> we still have magazines here that belong to you. So uh -huh. basically at that time then I just started like I I reconnected with self in terms of just being able to being mm -hmm. able to like draw again because I did that a lot when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So I was just like, okay, cool, I need to pass time, you know, and I reconnected. So the little charge that I had on my phone, mm -hmm. or the little data that I had on my phone, I just put like a nice jazz or something playlist, and then just like went on the wall. If I remember well, actually, the photograph, <laughs> you know the movie, The Photograph? Yeah, I do. I do. Yes. Uh, so it's Ray and, oh my God, what's his name? I forget his name, but... I know it's a yeah, so uh, some guy called Robert Glasper did the like soundtrack. Soundtrack. So I was listening to the soundtrack album. Mm. I think I listened to it a lot as I was drawing. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> one of the things that when you do art for art's sake, there's a certain level of like authenticity that comes with it that attracts even the guys who just like wow that's beautiful yeah because remember now in that house this was in jamhuri 
I remember when I was now moving out, the caretaker walked in mm -hmm. and saw what I had done to the walls mm -hmm. and told me not to paint <laughs> the walls. Not to paint the walls. What did you say? I was like, okay. You know, because I was already like, okay, cool, I'm going to have to paint the walls. You know, like the standard, like I'm moving yeah. out, I'm going to have to paint the walls. I'm going to. Told me not to paint the walls. Even like, oh, you want to stay for one more month? Oh, we have other houses that could be, you know, like, you want to stay? <laughs> but I'm confused. He didn't want you drawing the walls. No, no, no. Then... Not to paint over the art. Oh, he loved the art. He loved the art. I, we do have a video of us moving, moving out from out, that house. Yeah. I hope that we can find it and attach it. If we don't find it, too bad. <laughs> but um, when I went to his house, before we got together and moved in together, his house was, like, every wall was, had painting, had not paintings, had uh, drawings on them, and it was so beautiful. Yeah, so yeah. the caretaker didn't want me to paint over the art. He actually... Yeah. I got an extra month <laughs> for free. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was really beautiful to look at. And um, guys, to kind of to kinda give you a strong foundation of what we're talking about, let me give you a story, okay? When yeah. I started out with my the things that I love to do artistically, one of them is video editing. Video editing is such a big part of my career. Oh. And um, where do I place this as I paint? Just here. Yeah. So I started out to video editing because my heart was broken. I had a boyfriend and then we broke up and then I had a, an editing software on my laptop and I had photos and, and videos from times that we had had together. Oh, so what? I, what happened? Do you have that video? I do not. I do not. I really, really wish I kept it, but I probably threw it away. Like, or, or it got lost. Like, you know, we weren't really good with uh, storage back storage, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably got lost with like a laptop or something but guys so um this guy broke my heart and i took together these photos and videos and created like this beautiful um video and i had so much it was so therapeutic for me to just do mm. it and i didn't do it to show him or to show anybody i did it to deal with my heartbreak and that is honestly one thing that i felt really made me get over it and got me into video editing because now I was meeting up with my friends and my family, my cousins, and we would shoot small things and I would edit those. And then fast forward, video editing becomes what? A job, okay, right? Now I'm being contacted by different people to video edit their videos. Now that it's become a job, I started to see it differently, right? When I'm editing, I'm thinking about what that other person wants, needs, what they require. I'm thinking about, oh my goodness, is this good enough? Am I doing it well enough for uh, this job? Um, do I have the capacity to edit well enough to be paid thousands of dollars or something? Uh, it became this thing, which is not bad still. You know, it's just the, I feel like it's the natural growth in your career, you know? Uh, um, but it stopped being something that I'm doing simply because uh, I enjoy it. Uh, and consequently, what happened is I stopped doing it for enjoyment. I, I stopped doing it for enjoyment. Now, every time I edited, it had to be because it's someone's job. And because I'm spending a couple of hours every day video editing, it means when I have free time, I'm not going to spend it on editing. Mm. And gradually, over the years, video editing stopped being um, my creative expression space, and my therapy and my... You know, it's, my so interesting, love. it's so interesting you mentioned therapy because uh -huh. I remember when so okay for, um, backtrack to when I like got back into pencil art mm -hmm. on the walls mm -hmm. um, so uh, my dad had given me this book that year this is 2020 okay. so he had given me a, the power of now mm. which is basically and just a nutshell of it is basically being the present moment and you're able to live life to its fullest, right? Just being in the show. present moment. It's actually a very famous book. Yeah. I think Oprah has talked about Oprah's it. Oprah's talked about it. Kendrick did an entire album <laughs> based wow. on it. Big mm -hmm. Steppers is literally even has ex extracts with like conversations with the with the writer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but anyway. Um, so the one thing that I, I realized when I started drawing, mm -hmm. I got the same sensation as I used to get when I was on stage playing. Mm -hmm. Like I felt my heart beat. 
playing because you have a background in um in playing instruments on stage and all mm -hmm. but so now like this time mm -hmm. it wasn't playing instruments on stage it was drawing, drawing on the, yeah so i remember like, like this sensation uh -huh. i remember the same sensation i'm like when i'm doing that like um the different strokes or the different pencil strokes mm -hmm. like i remember just feeling like oh wow that's it's coming together, together. you know and you're like, oh, it feels so good. It feels so, like you're feeling your heart. You know, you're feeling your heart beat, or you're feeling just like a nice warmth in your heart area. Mm -hmm. You're and in said, the zone. You're in the zone, basically. And I started realizing, like, at that moment, like, I could even just like go back to like even with this, even with this one that's on the wall right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Like when I was drawing, like I could tell the direction that the painter who painted the house was you know uh stroking the the brush mm, the paintbrush mm. the paintbrush because you're literally you're there you know mm -hmm. you're literally in the present moment so it's interesting that you talked about like how art you know it's when very it's art, therapeutic when it's art for art and when you're not thinking for about for art's sake yeah That's and that is mean. why it's important as a creative to have time for yourself that you put into art for art's sake um I'm having trouble moving this. Do you mind? Because I need to move away from your jeans. I keep touching it and mm. or move yours further away from mine a bit. Yeah. So, um, and then there's something. There's a reason why people, I feel, um, not people, I bet there are people out there who spend hours every day just creating art for purely just their enjoyment. Mm. Um, but for a lot of people, once you become an adult, you start to feel like you're pressed for time. And you start to feel like time can be used for better things rather than probably spending like four hours painting your jeans, you know? Right. You find that people beat themselves up so much about how they spend their time. They're like, it has to be productive, it has to make me money, or it has to be, you know, something. Yeah. Um, they only forgive themselves when they're spending time with other people. What do you guys do when you're by yourself, like, hanging out, you know? Artists nowadays are also spending a lot of time watching stuff as opposed to creating stuff. Creating. And um, I feel like it's definitely important to carve out that time where you just do it for the sake of doing it, no consequence. I think I'm also going to go back to, because you said how artists are spending time uh, consuming in place of creating. Mm. I'm going to go back to just the reference that I had, the power of now. Mm. So I remember in the book, there's a place where um, Eckhart was like, that's the author of the book. That's the author. Mm -hmm. um, Eckhart Tolle mm -hmm. was like, um, when you're really in the present moment, you're able to also like be creative in terms of solving problems, yours mm. or others, because it's okay, you can come. Because you have moments of okay, cool. I'm here now. Mm -hmm. It takes you away momentarily from the rat race in your mind, mm -hmm. and then it takes you into. That's my. Da I don't know if you can see. You can him. see. Come, come here. Come, come, come. say hi. <laughs> that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know, he started all of this when we were kids and we did well in exams. He used to buy us paint brushes and paint. I don't know if you can remember that, Dad. Can you remember? I do. <laughs> <laughs> he used to buy us paint brushes and paints and. And books, and now we're li we're really just living that life. <laughs> Imagine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we just let's see how it comes out. It's going to be nice. I think yeah. so too. It's going to be nice. I think so too. Okay. Yeah. So I was telling you, like, um, what mm -hmm. Eckhart was saying, mm -hmm. when you're in that moment of presence, mm -hmm. then you're able to also like resolve. You're able to become creative in finding solutions. You know, I see. basically, like when you you're can in solve that problems. moment, you can be able to, you know, like, because even right now, mm -hmm. like, if you focus on the thread, mm -hmm. the pattern of the thread, mm -hmm. and try and feel the paintbrush mm -hmm. as it like glides against the thread, mm -hmm. just like intentionally, just like even the sound, try and see if you can hear the sound. I can. Yeah, then now when you come back into... That's such a good feeling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So now It's like you're, so, you're focused and, yeah. and without effort. Does that make without sense? Without effort, yeah. So now when you come back into sort of like normal life, <laughs> I'm going to say see. normal life, then you're able to... 
it's creative thinking mm -hmm. like you're <laughs> You're able to focus, you're able to do a bunch of other things, really, mm -hmm. pretty much. Pretty and much. You, and so you can apply it in any field. You know, there's this thing that people think um, um, that, you know, oh, mm -hmm. creative thinking is only for artists. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, though, like, all of us are artists. That's why, like, if you look at even the big tech companies, mm -hmm. your Googles and your Facebooks or Meta and all, yeah. like, their companies aren't set up the same way other companies are set up it's not a desk and a seat mm. you know like they have their their offices almost feel like playgrounds mm -hmm. they have like a bunch I of i know yeah. ping pong's really yeah, exactly because they want to tap yeah because they want to tap power into, nap area exactly you want to tap into like creative responses into finding mm -hmm. solutions you know so it's really applicable in any field so this, you know, this whole thing, art for art's sake, is actually a movement that started, I'm pretty sure it must have started earlier than that maybe, but um, when you read online it says it started out to, like in the 19th century. Mm. Um, a bunch of artists, writers, authors, painters, etc. Um, pushed this philosophy that art, the art you create already has value just by the fact that you created it. Mm. That it has, that art can be made purely for aesthetic reasons, yeah. for the artist's enjoyment, not just because there's a purpose to it or a payment or like an external attachment to it. You can just create for the sake of it. For the sake of um, and that's the thing that we do when we are young, when we're children. And then when we grow up, we forget to do things just because we enjoy them. Unless they are like big out of, you know, I don't know. <laughs> hey, that's true, actually. Yeah. So, and um, when you start to approach art this way, or when you allow yourself at least once a week or every day, if possible, depending on your schedule, to yeah. create with no consequence, it really allows you to unlock parts of your brain. Actually, and I think even, I'm going to reference another like successful person. Mm -hmm. So Bill Gates, the other, um, well, not the other day. Because he, he's gone. Bill Gates oh, is no. still here. Sorry, That's yeah. Steve I Jobs. Thought, yeah, that was Steve Jobs. Sorry. But, so Bill Gates was having a conversation with, with um, um, I'll call him a thinker. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Miles Monroe, Dr. Mm -hmm. Miles Monroe. Mm -hmm. So the thing that happened in that conversation was Miles asked him, why are you no longer sitting in the board of Google? You know? Uh -huh. And he said... He was doing a lot of like, when he's in the board, he's doing a lot of like predict, like, what is it? Just crunching numbers and saying, oh, we can't, or oh, we can't do this, and mm -hmm. but he wasn't creating. Mm -hmm. So he sat out, said he had to sit out because he felt like, you know, when he's not doing like the board stuff, mm -hmm. he can actually, he's an ideas person. I see. Mm -hmm. And he enjoys you know, just finding activities that help him to create solutions that he can now bring back to Microsoft, the larger Microsoft team. Like, mm. hey, what's up? Let's actually try and make, you know, this, or let's try and make that, or let's try and make, you know, and that's Bill Gates. That's like one of the richest people uh, in yeah. our generation. Mm -hmm. um, and so what I was trying to drive at was that if you allow yourself to create art for the sake of artistic creation, first of all, you unlock different levels of your creativity, one, and two, you boost your own confidence because now you're not attaching an outcome to the art you're creating. You're not like, you're not afraid that I'm going to fail. Mm. You're not trying to impress somebody else. You're not even trying to impress your own judgments over yourself, you know? And so that's why I feel like it's such an important thing to do. So guys, the benefits of allowing yourself to just create content for the sake of creating content not content, but creating art. art for the sake of creating art is, of course, it'll boost your confidence, unlock levels of creativity. It'll, oh man, we've talked about how it's therapeutic as well. Yeah. Um, I feel like it also allows you to slow down from mm -hmm. all the rush of everyday life. <laughs> um, and I, I think that's why I was open-minded to doing this. Mm. Because this is usually, I mean, I've, I've not, I haven't done this before. But I thought to myself, you know what? Let me give it a try. Um, and even if it backfires, 
which you believed that it wouldn't at all. Yeah. But even if it backfires, it will still be okay. Because I'm not attaching some aesthetic to it. Does that make sense? Some meaning. Some, yeah, I'm just creating and enjoying and having a good time, you know? Yeah, yeah, and it's actually a nice way to bond. Like, mm-hmm. it really is a nice way to bond. Like, I feel like I could solve the world's problems right now. Just by doing it. <laughs> I will say for sure the way that the brush feels yeah. on the fabric is so nice. <laughs> it's so nice. I should probably have like red for these lips over here. I see. Okay, we can get red on our wing. But how will we paint it? Yeah. So guys, um, these <laughs> creations here, despite the fact that we're talking about art for the sake of art, our creations do have a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> we're wearing them for uh, Salty Souls. Soul Fest. Soul Fest event happening on the 2nd of November, which is today. today. So yes, indeed, we are painting on the same day that we <laughs> are going to the event, yes. Imagine, but if, if you see, like, it dries super fast. Wow, it looks good. You think so? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's literally just a textbook center. Mm. And it dries super fast anyway. Yeah. So guys, you know, we, we recognize that there's a level of privilege that some that people have when you have, say, a couple of hours to spend um, just creating art in this way. I feel like some people might feel like, I don't have the time. I don't have the luxury. I've got many clients waiting for this and this and that. Or... Maybe people's confidence are so, you know, ruined that they create art while judging it. Mm. They're not able to just create without looking at it from other people's lenses. I think, actually, that's another thing. Like, I feel like when you do art for art's sake, there's a certain level of it's sort of building your confidence in Kabisa. you that it brings... You know, because you're really trusting yourself. You're trusting yourself yeah. that you're making something that you love. That you love. You know, and it really, it emanates when you're speaking with other people or when you're engaging with other people. That sort of trust, like it always continues. Like you can always... It makes into, yeah, your, it everyday into your everyday life, basically. Yeah, I hear you. This is the most, I've never done it like standing. I know, <laughs> but we had to do it standing for the video. But I, I like how it looks on camera. I like that you guys can see this process. Yeah, true. How about you guys create um, something artistic just for the sake of creating it and then share it with us? Share it with us, yeah. DM us or I don't know, something. Oh, another thing actually. Okay, so this, of course you know them. And... Ed and Emily, good friends These of ours. Good friends, yes. Uh, we've done actually a video with Ed on, on wellness um, um, and with respect to the creative industry. Mm. So Emily is his wife. So <laughs> COVID times as well, mm -hmm. I used to third wheel. <laughs> you poor guy. Until I came along. <laughs> Until you came along. <laughs> on Zoom. Like we'd link up on Zoom uh -huh. and literally just do this like talk and make art mm. for hours and hours for hours and hours and it really like honestly it actually made our like friendship become strong. stronger yeah if you don't know if you if, okay so of course you probably don't know who ed is but ed runs an amazing like facility called z6 cross training and it's all about really changing the narrative with regards to what fitness is for mm -hmm. anyone, really. And I'm sure we'll have another session with him soon. Yeah, I can't wait for that. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> You're seeing it. I'm seeing it come, but I'm also a little scared-ish. Yeah, I'm so like, 
please look good. But so you what, see, that's the pressure that we're talking about. We shouldn't <laughs> have as, as creatives. Please look good. But it's a thing. Okay, so yeah, I think I listen to a lot of like podcasts. Mm-hmm. You know, Nelson Mandela and my dad, I think, is gonna be wearing a Madiba shirt today. But like yeah. Nelson Mandela fought for, you know, was fighting against apartheid, right? Mm. And basically, he's fighting about like, okay, cool, blacks are also mm-hmm. just as equal. Mm-hmm. But I had something that um, in his book, I think we even have his book here, right? We do. We do have Nelson Mandela autobiography. Yeah. So like in his book, he talked about the first time he got onto a plane and there was a black pilot. Mm-hmm. He wasn't sure that gets there safe. Oh. And then it hit him that he's really been programmed, like as in this programming is so strong mm-hmm. that oh God. if he's a liberator and he's also believing that a black pilot cannot fly him. It's like, it, mm-hmm. it caught him like, that's really what he's really fighting for, you know. Oh so gosh. in truth, don't feel bad if, you know, at more if of I a bad myself, story. If I find myself thinking... If I find myself giving myself pressure that yeah, this has exactly. to look good. Like, yeah. I'm the one who gives the value. I think, like, that's why it's such a huge confidence boost because just recognizing that even if I decide right now to just splash the paint or yeah, use my hands and make exactly. prints all over, that it'll still be good because I say it is so it and is it is good. because it is my creation. My artwork, you know, I get it's to your call energy. Shots. You put your it's energy, my energy into my self expression. So, know. guys, it's this is such an important um, topic for us. Uh, we definitely want to spend more time instead of being constantly busy, we want to spend time allowing our enjoying our artistic journey because being an artist is a full time job. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Not even job, it's a full time way of being. Living, because we are not Way of creators. living. So we should not abandon that for what? Because you're trying to build, you know, wealth for when you're Riches. 60 and then forget, and then you're forgetting about enjoying the now. We have to find ways to enjoy the now by allowing ourselves to spend time in the creation of art with no consequence, just having fun, just enjoying ourselves, and just. Just loving life. Let me paraphrase what you've said. Please do. About creating wealth. Mm -hmm. So, um, poor people talk about money or the lack of it. Mm -hmm. Rich people talk about what they can get with the money. Wealthy people talk about ideas. Mm -hmm. And basically, ideas generate money. True. So, um, if you're tapping into this element, Mm. you're really actually tapping into your wealth oh my goodness yes. because then you're you're really talking about ideas you know like you're talking about creating you're practicing that nature of being an ideator mm-hmm. and in there you can be able to like actually find a lot of things that will solve mm-hmm. problems or will you know like will be I'm trying to look for the word for it. Like I feel like also um, like divine inspiration comes through certain times like these as well. I, this is not really your point, but mm, mm. I feel like you can hear things or come up with ideas or come up with solutions and come up with things that you wouldn't come up with otherwise when you're stressed and constrained, you know? Yeah. So guys, what we're going to do is after we have finished, we'll take a picture, show you guys. We'll take a picture of ourselves at the event and show you guys. But for now, we'd love to know what you guys think about creating art, art for, for art's art sake. sake. And do you do it? Don't lie. Don't lie. Do you do it? How often do you do it? How often do you think one should do it? In your, in your perspective, in you know? In your perspective. Um, and we would like to, I guess, sign out for now. Yeah. This has been Long Play Podcast. With Olango. And Jangara, baby. <laughs> oh, also, I forgot to shout out to my to our good friends, the Lane Steppers. They made this awesome, beautiful t-shirt. So guys, go check them out on Instagram. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>